Hello everybody, my name is Fisk31 and this is going to be the second part of the tutorial here. If you guys have not seen the first part of the tutorial, that will be uh, a link to the description below where we explained how the time components worked. So for now, let's actually delete all of these real quick because now we are going to be focusing on the point format or the stat format, whatever you want to call it, in this video. So let's actually rename this to, uh, let's say, home team and away team. This is just for text purposes. So we now have a home and an away. And now you can see a point and stat thing on the left side of your screen. Select and drag the points display here. And now we'll call this home and away. As you can see on the components on the top right, just in case you forget, you can name the components for easier organization with your connections. Um, if you need more help with connections, go to the previous video because I uh, try to explain it in as much detail as possible in that video to uh, save some time for this video. Uh, so basically for the set point format, most of the buttons do the same thing uh, compared to the time format. So let's first connect these to each other's respective point format. We have the home one uh, set up. Now let's do the away one. So what you can do with the add buttons is, as these are now connected in columns, um, if you hit plus one or you hit the plus button, it is currently set to plus one by default. What you could do is you could actually change the value so you could make it so it subtracts by five instead. Just make sure you hit enter so it saves. And now you can subtract by five. Well, this adds by one. You could also make this add by 10 or whatever number you want. And now it adds by 10. Pretty cool. So you can now add and subtract by a uh, set number amounts, which is helpful for sports like uh, like soccer, not soccer, football or basketball, which has like multiple point systems, like a two pointer, a three pointer, a free throw for basketball. Football has a um, has a touchdown, a safety, a field goal, a point after attempt, things like that. So you could also connect this. Uh, we'll have this one be one point. And now when I click on this one on the left, it only adds by one, while this one adds by 10, which is pretty cool that you could have different number values be connected to each one. Same thing with the uh, type time amount we had in the last video, we have a type points amount. So rather than having to hit these buttons, let's say we wanted to get to 100, rather than hitting this all the way to 100, well, let's say you wanted to go from 26 to 100, rather than going all the way with the buttons, uh, you could just type your way to Whoa. You could just type to 100 and click set, and it automatically sets it to 100. And the same thing could be applied for the other team if you wanted to. And it's pretty simple, I would say, for these buttons. You got the add by a certain value, the subtraction by a certain value, and you got the set the exact value. But it doesn't end quite there because there is one more button I have not introduced yet. And this does not exist on the time-based buttons either. This is going to be a little interesting because this sets a specific number. It doesn't add. It doesn't subtract. It just sets a number. So basically similar to the type points amount, uh, it's going to be setting it to a specific number. So for now, by default, it sets it to set the amount to one. So every time I hit this button, regardless of what the value is, if I hit this purple button right here, it just sets it right to one. And you might be wondering, well, why do I need something like that if I just have this component right here, which I could type the value? And the reason for that is, let's say you are doing a sport like tennis. Tennis doesn't uh, do a traditional sports format compared to other sports because they do 0 to 15. Uh oh, I got to hit enter. 0 to 15 to 30 and then to 40. So it goes... So what you could do is have multiple of these buttons set up. So now every time I hit this top button, it's zero. The second button will be 15. I got to hit enter so it does it properly. And I got to connect it. Oopsies, still got to connect it. Don't forget your connections, folks. Otherwise, it won't do anything. So now that it's connected, every time I hit the top button, it just has it set to zero. Second button, it's 15. Third button set for 30. And the bottom button set for 40. For most sports, you might use the set number to reset it to zero because it's easier to do than just going all the way to here and then just typing it in. 
That's what I would use it for. But let's say you're doing sports like tennis, rather than having to go here every time and type in the score, you could just do the set number value and it makes it much sooner or make it much quicker. Much quicker. Um, you could also type in the, um, the you could change the uh, display text so it's easier to understand what it is. So if you go on the properties here, currently it says set number right here in the properties. You could just change it to whatever text you want so you know which each button is. I forgot to explain that in the last video, actually I got this wrong. So zero, 15, 30, 40. I forgot to explain that. You could do the same thing for the set time right here. You could have it set to start. You could just call it game clock start, something like that. You could do the same thing. But basically for this example, you now have it set for zero, 15, 30, 40. Just don't get confused between display text and the set amount. Set amount determines what the value is, the value is. And the display text just determines uh, what is on the button. And what's also pretty cool is like you can connect uh, multiple timer buttons to each other, to other timers. You could set these up to multiple um, displays as well. So if I want to have this one be, we'll call this um, shots on goal, for example, for hockey again. We'll do another hockey example. This one will be goals, we'll say. And you could just have it go out, count up right now. And then you could just add in the shots on goal component. So now every time I hit plus, it adds plus to both at the same time. Add shots on goal. Now it subtracts every time. You get the idea. Um, and this could be very useful for goals and shots on goal. So an example of this would be, um, let's say the one on the left is for goals and this one's up for shots on goal. Um, right now, if you have a goal scored, or if you have these two pressed, it'll just add and subtract. But shots on goal uh, should be its own thing. So we'll add this right here. Shots on goal, its own set of buttons. So now every time I hit this, it only counts this one up and down for shots on goal. But let's say a goal is scored. Obviously, if a goal is scored, a shot on goal is counted up. Well, now when I hit this button... It adds a goal here, and it adds one shot on goal here. Oh, wait, let's say the goal is waved off. We could subtract it, and it removes both. Um, and of course, you could just add the shots on goal individually. But this is basically something that makes it a little easier, so you don't have to have two sets of buttons for every single value. You could actually make it slightly easier with less buttons to add up more space. And that's what's really cool. Uh, if you can... Uh, figure out how you want to picture it in your head and are able to use the connections properly, then you are able to accomplish things like this, which adds more features to what you want to do. And to show off what it actually looks like when you do it all properly, I'm going to show off my finished uh, scoreboard. We'll go to editor mode. This is what happens actually when you do it properly. Uh, I added a PNG image to the background. I'll actually show that in the next video, but just to show this off real quick so I know, so you know what you're capable of doing. Um, if you hit start, it just does the clock normally. Um, it'll have all the clocks synced in together. And then you have a goal scored. It does that. You could add in the shots on goal individually. I currently have it set up so it's set up differently rather than synced in together. But you're able to do it synced in uh, together. You got the plus and minus, just in case you, you didn't see these in the other video. And then you got the reset shots on goal button here. Like I have, let's say you have 16 shots. You don't want to count all the way down. So you just hit that. Resets it. I actually have it so it resets both shots on goal and goals at the same time. So you got 12 here, 6 here. Hit reset. Sets it to zero. Pretty cool. Might be a little confusing at first, but once you get the hang of the connections you are able of doing things like this once again if you have any questions uh go to the discord link down below where you can get the download link for the software with the up-to-date version as well as uh q a with anyone else in the server including staff members who are working on this project and uh maybe even some updates on um what the future is going to be for this program uh, but for now, this is just a quick rush tutorial on how the points and stats components work. Um, there might be a better tutorial in the future. Uh, but for now, this is just going to be uh, for day one release. 
If you have any questions, join the Discord below. And best of luck to everyone who wants to use the software. In the next video, we will be showing off um, how to do the background image and how to add a component on top of it so you could make something like this real quick.